Michael Jackson's Stories in the Room. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. Join film composer Anthony Marinelli, who programmed synthesizers for seven songs on Thriller, and A&R veteran film producer Stephen Ray, who assisted Quincy Jones and was in the studio every day with Quincy and Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. I'm Anthony Marinelli with my longtime close friend and co-host, Stephen Ray, bringing you the real stories directly from the talented people in the room with us during the making of Thriller, the greatest selling album of all time. But, you know, back to a quick thing you said about Quincy and then you buy it. But then they also like Thriller is so universal that then the parents bought it. And now it's grandparents listening to the same music that kids are buying. So that album spanned three generations of listeners yeah that's yeah beyond the call of duty because, easily. yeah well easily and see here's the thing i remember i remember, I remember uh, being asked what's the difference between uh michael and elvis i said well the difference between michael elvis and even the beatles is that while they were all great you know in their own right <clears throat> uh only michael got the babies right right he he mm-hmm. he was able to to connect with the babies yeah that definitely affected me when you just said that the beatles connected with you know uh young kids and you mm-hmm. know uh, maybe some parents whatever but michael got everybody he got the the entire range from the babies to the grandparents. yeah and that's what you know, because Quincy, you know what it, Quincy it, spoke to that about he's you know with with him and Michael, they wanted two records per household. So the kids did not want to share. Yeah. The kids did not want to share the record with the parents. So human nature under certain songs, <laughs> "Lady in My Life," "Human Nature," there's songs that yeah. the parents connected yeah. with. And then you got PYT. You mm-hmm. want to be dark, starting something and beat it and Billie Jean that the kids connected to. You know. There you go. You know. I mean, that takes. A- Think about that. Two serious two, two up, records man. per household. To your point about the Beatles and Elvis, that didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. It sounds impossible yeah. almost. Yeah, even now, you is how hard would it be to get two parents don't want to share the records and vice versa? The kids are like, oh no, you go get your own copy. But he taps yeah, into it. it. There, there's just the innocence yeah. and and a, a profound yeah. sense of of wonderment in everything that came out of that Quincy Michael thing. And that's why I think little kids, yeah. because my kids immediately, like I never thought of that. Like if I played, you know, other great music for them, it's too mature. But Michael stayed with this sense because you know it's got grooves and beats and all that. But there's always this intangible sense of innocence that I think it's it's a universal truth that's exactly. in all of his stuff that I don't even know that he could control it because that's what he was always striving for. And it's so moving. That's it's, it's who he was. It's who he was. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's 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 the key right there. Yeah, yeah and that's and why I, it's I, so loved today because it's it's so lacking. And, and anytime you get a piece of that, you want it. It's it's just it's just always in it. So hold on to it, yeah. you know, one of the things that we talked about is how does it feel to um, have played on an album that is so iconic that will live forever. Um, and how did that change your life and your experience, um, knowing that you were such an essential part of the making of this record? Well, it's not like I go around saying that every day, but I am tremendously blessed. It was a, a, a huge blessing uh, for me personally. It was a great accomplishment. Uh, I have a flood of memories. Uh, that can never be taken away. And it's one of the proudest moments of my career, certainly. Um, it's just something I'm very, I'm just very grateful for. And I will always remain eternally grateful yeah. for the privilege and the honor of, of uh, having contributed to that record. Well, we were, we were, we were privileged to be in the room with you. Uh, and of course with Quincy and with Michael and all the others. But it's uh, we all feel blessed and uh, and honored, and uh, we we thank you, we we thank you very much for uh, 
coming on and sharing because that's what it's all about. Yeah, well, thank you. This was fun. I'm glad I did it. And Tony, again, has been way too long. Sorry for the delay and the, it's the MIA and all that stuff, but uh, we're going to make up for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll look forward to seeing you anytime. Yeah, I look forward to it. And thank you. Um, so we're going to sign off, I guess, um, Michael Jackson's Thriller album, Stories in the Room from the great Greg Fillingain. Join us for the next episode of Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room, with your hosts, Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Watch our extended interviews on youtube.com forward slash at stories in the room. Audio only interviews are available on all podcast networks. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Stories in the Room. For the latest news and links, visit the website, storiesintheroom.com. This podcast is produced by Christian D. Brune and David Wolf, recorded by Autovita Studios, additional recording by Ben Rackless, edited by Jay Spang and Sean Hedinger, music by Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Michael Jackson's the rebel.